Well, it's interesting because in 2010 we have actually seen uh, new issuances um, in Europe. So, for example, Green Valley, which was done by Group Hama, and Calypso, which was done by AXA. Well, AXA was the sponsor. And they were both met with quite big success. Um, and part of the reason is obviously the fact that the majority of the cat bonds uh, to date have been U.S. centrics. So um, having European exposure um, provides diversification um, to investors within the peril range, if you will. Um, so I think that if that trend continues, uh, based on the success of the two that we've seen in 2010, um, that's going to be quite exciting for investors. Well, you know, there hasn't been, I mean, 2010 was a was quite a successful year on on the cat bond issuances side. Uh, on the collateralized reinsurance, uh, the market is still recovering from the the financial crisis. Um, a lot of the investors in both both side of the ILS market, so the cat bonds and and the collateralized reinsurance, um, a large part of it were hedge funds that today are no longer here. Um, so the economy is slowly recovering. Uh, we're slowly starting to see uh, funds flowing into the market again. Uh, but because of the absence of major cats, uh, the rates haven't been fantastic. So uh, you know the rates on the property cat side have been relatively flat, if not declining, uh, which obviously doesn't provide the um, the return expected from from the investors. Um, in order to invest more money, but as the market gets more attractive. Uh, but counterbalancing that, interestingly, there's very few uh, investment opportunities out there that are exciting for investors. Mm -hmm. So maybe CAD is not, maybe CAD is not that, that bad after all. We've seen over the last two years, um, you know, leveraging and financing, basically contracting significantly, where banks are lending less money, providing less leverage to investors. And the crucial part why you need leverage, um, A, in order to allow you to invest more money into the space, if you're an investor that is interesting in that interested in that space, but more importantly, it allows you to leverage the returns. And so to give you an example, uh, post uh, Katrina Rita and Wilma in 2005, we saw a lot of sidecars uh, springing out in the market. And investors in sidecars were predominantly hedge funds, uh, private equity funds, a bit of pensions, and, and institutional investors as well. But the, uh, the advantage for them is not only the market, obviously post KRW, uh, Katrina Rita and Wilma, uh, the, the rates were uh, a lot more, had increased significantly compared to prior years. But because financing was available, uh, it was allowing them to leverage the return. So to give you an example, if, um, you know, if a portfolio expected return was 10% and you were able to get leveraging for 50% for of the amount you would put in, you would almost double, obviously you have to deduct the, the, the cost of financing you would almost double the expected return, which was very attractive for some of those investors. Uh, with the contraction, obviously that has not helped, um, not only from the standpoint of providing the leverage return and therefore continuing the attraction or the attractiveness, I should say, of the returns. Uh, but slowly we're starting to see, you know, banks lending again, uh, leverage coming in slowly. Uh, and hopefully as the economy recovers, uh, we'll get to see more leveraging coming in. Uh, Solvency 2 obviously is going to, uh, let me first say that Solvency 2 in terms of the parameters of capital requirement is, is, is not finalized, which is a little bit of a concern because uh, the implementation date is in a couple of years. 
um, and uh, they're still not completely agreeing in terms of what the capital formula is going to be. Uh, so there's still some um, data call made in order to fine tune the capital uh, model, which is uh, which is pillar one. So solvency two has three pillars, but pillar one is obviously the the capital capital uh, calculation. Um, there's no doubt, however, that solvency two is going to increase capital requirement for companies, uh, insurance as well as reinsurance companies. Um, for reinsurance companies, I don't think there's going to be a big concern because ultimately they have to keep capital to satisfy the rating agencies such as AMBES or SNP or Fitch. Um, and so to that extent, they're already well capitalized. Most of them are already well capitalized. On the insurance company side, however, um, it's not as, as simple. Um, and so we are going to need, um, companies are going to need more capital. And the only way they can get more capital is either issue more shares, which you know might not always be easy. Uh, we might see some merger and acquisitions in order to uh, alleviate that problem. But the third piece, which I think is will have a direct impact on the ILS market, is the fact that we will need uh, well companies will need top or at least tail risk protections. And one of the best way to handle tail risk protection is via the ILS market. So either through the issuance of cat bonds or through the issuance of collateralized reinsurance. So my prognostic is that I think Solvency 2 is going to uh, provide new opportunities to the ILS market um, and hopefully contribute to the growth of the ILS market.